In Karnataka, as rains subside in Kodugu, focus now shifts to rehabilitation. Even as the state remains on high alert this week, over 4,000 people have been rescued so far and 6,500 people who are, being, who are displaced are being rehabilitated in relief centres. Now, efforts are also on to clear blocked roads and restore power supply as 3,800 electric poles are damaged across the state. Let's go live across now to my colleague Abhita, who's joining us who's joining us live uh, this morning uh, from Kodugu. She's been tracking the developments. Uh, in fact, we'll try and uh, go to her. Now, one of the concerns that we have been hearing from those on the ground has been uh, you know, the, to check the spread of contagious diseases, which is a serious problem in the aftermath of flooding. Absolutely, Virin, because we've, we've seen that problem uh, not only in Karnataka, but even in Kerala, where the state government has, in fact, uh, you know, uh, it is one of a major concern, and which is why uh, medicines are needed during rehabilitation so that there is no uh, danger of an epidemic or any kind of outbreak. Now, in Karnataka specifically, the state government has also directed all hotels to not take any bookings in Kurk specifically till August the 31st. Okay, so, uh, you know, one of the other problems, of course, is, uh, you know, the amount of aid that is, uh, you know, thankfully right. rushed to both states of Kerala and Karnataka, but the Karnataka government making it, uh, the Karnataka government and the government machinery making it clear that at the moment they've got uh, sufficient items and uh, requesting people to send any relief they have in cash rather than in kind because stocking all of this is also a problem. Right, absolutely, because uh, let's remember that uh, while the, the flood water is receding, the rains have not stopped completely. We're still seeing pockets uh, of the state uh, that has uh, rainfall. So definitely uh, now relief centers pushing uh, for more cash donations as opposed to food supplies. Okay, let's go across now to Amita Balachandra, who's been tracking the developments there in Kodugu. Uh, she's joining us on the phone line now. Amita, uh, good morning. Tell us uh, what it looks like. Uh, has the, is there rain today? And what are the immediate concerns of the authorities on the ground as we speak? Good morning to you, Rain. Uh, so far, uh, uh, you know, rain has subsided, but uh, relief operations yesterday uh, was on standby. Rescue teams was uh, were on standby, uh, but today we're hearing uh, uh, from sources uh, within the NDRF team that they have, uh, uh, you know, gotten a call to go to a couple of places because uh, perhaps the death toll will increase. That they have found uh, dead bodies in uh, some villages around Madikeri. So uh, currently, uh, the confirmed number of deaths is 12, according to the government as of uh, day before yesterday. Uh, that number is likely to go up. There is no estimate of how many people are missing at this point because locals say that uh, the number uh, of missing people especially in interiors, is far more than uh, what is uh, uh, officially being communicated. Apart from that, 3,800 uh, poles have been damaged. Electricity uh, in Kodogo at this point is a huge problem. In Madikeri, most of the hotels and shops are running to generators. Uh, but apart from that, relief camps and interiors uh, are facing a huge problem with electricity. So they require torches, emergency lights, etc. Relief material in relief camps are are in abundance. Food and clothes are in abundance. At this point, uh, they need funds uh, for people who have to build their future from now on. Well, absolutely. Those are the current uh, immediate concerns there across the state uh, of, I mean, in particular, rather, the district of Kodugu right. in Karnataka.